G'day. Today I've got a great new gardening product for you. We all know the importance of recycling for the environment. Well, what better place to practice than your own garden? Just think of compost, grass clippings and manure. Well, now a company, Landmine Industries, has brought out a new range of products for your garden that are 100% recycled, 100% natural and 100% good for your garden. So, if you're doing a bit of repotting and you want to get a good fertiliser, well, for my money, nothing beats a good blood and bone. And this is it. Pole Potting Mix. Now, Pole Potting Mix is a Cambodian byproduct, and it's a full-bodied bag of rich nutrients that'll bring your garden back to life. It's good for pots, lawns and flower beds. So for my money, these remains remain unbeatable value. But unfortunately, it has been hard to find since the early 80s, and now it's almost impossible to get. But Landmine Industries are proud to announce Milosevic Mulch. Now, Milosevic Mulch is a Balkan bone meal and has a slightly coarser texture than the Pol Potty mix, but is much more refined than the cheaper brands like that African stuff. And don't be stingy with it, because there's plenty more where that came from. Now, earlier on in the week, I went out to the factory to have a look at how this little bag of wonder comes about. So this is where the process begins. The raw materials are broken down into different bins, depending on origin and quality. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I just overheard them talking about the probability of a Macedonian product being available before the end of the year. So from those bins, the raw materials make their way down here. As you can see, this is where they're churned and broken down before being roasted in the furnace. I tell you what though, I'm a little nervous sitting up here, but I'd hate to see what would happen to a bloke if he fell in there. This is the reject bin. This is where all the bits that were too tough to break down go. Has anyone lost a ring? I've got no problems with it because uh, as long as it's uh, none of my family members or um, no one that I associate with or know on a, on a pretty close basis, people are, I guess, getting chopped up every day at the morgue, so it happens, everyone knows it happens, and um, it's something you just live with, I guess. I don't know, I just find it disgusting thinking about it. What are you going to do with me after I die? Put me to good use. It doesn't really matter if the, the people and the, the, the family, the relative is allowed it. I think that's all right. Yeah, it's better than using some more like uh, chemicals, that kind of thing, or poisons. I think we have to come a very long way in society before we can even start to look at those sorts of issues. Pretty interesting stuff, hey? And I'd like to thank the good people out at Landmine Industries for letting us take a look around the factory. I only wish more companies were so environmentally aware. Well, there you have it. Don't these daisies look great? For me, this is what gardening's all about. Perfect sunny days and the heady aroma of wet soil mixed with a good fistful of fertiliser. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be dead for quids. <laughs>
Well, an unusual request seeker, but I have a solution. Why don't you borrow a simple idea from our ancient Chinese friends? But instead of just binding the feet, why don't you bind the whole pet for a petitely proportioned pup? Just remember to keep the binding tight and stick to crepe bandages, not adhesive ones, or you'll have a small cranky ball of plucked skin rather than a fluffy bundle of joy. Wonderful. There you go, Zika. I hope that solved your problem. I don't know why feet binding is an ancient Chinese practice. The modern Chinese woman would look adorable with petite feet too. But right now, it's on with the show.